What is going on guys? My name is Brent and welcome to part 5 of my tutorial series on how to create the game Flappy Birds. So in this tutorial we're going to create a new play state in which we'll hold all of our mechanics for our actual game. We'll also go ahead and place the uh, Flappy Bird texture onto that play state. And then we're going to come back and add a transition so that uh, when somebody clicks on the menu state it will transition to the play state. So before we get started, I want to discuss a few things that I've gotten from feedback uh, to better comply with both the Java convention and game developer convention. Uh, so let's uh, rename our states package to a lowercase uh, s for Java convention. So we'll just, uh, here we go, refactor. So the next thing I was going to talk about in one of my next videos, but I think it's important to go ahead and get out of the way now, and that is to dispose of our textures and other media when we're done using them to prevent any kind of uh, memory leaks. So each state should also have a uh, public abstract void method for dispose. So public abstract void dispose. And then in our menu state, uh, we'll just go ahead and generate our uh, method here. And what we'll do is we'll do background dot dispose, and we'll do play button dot dispose. And what we'll do is we'll call that when we transition states. And finally, I'd just like to point out that uh, I'm doing a whole lot of things uh, from scratch rather than using some of the things that uh, libgdx actually exposes, like game screens in the game class. Um, and also things like uh, using textures instead of sprite maps. Uh, we, were, we will talk about those in future videos, but I feel like it's important to newer developers and programmers that they learn the basics first and then we work our way forward. Now with all that said, let's go ahead and get started with the focus of today's video. Let's go ahead and create a new state um, Java class here, and we're going to call it play state. And then this is going to extends um, state. We'll go ahead and include all the required methods for a state. So implement methods and go ahead and bring all of those in here. Let's also go ahead and add our constructor. So generate our constructor here. We'll create a new texture. So let's create a private texture and call it bird. And then in our constructor, bird equals new texture. And these are all, yeah, bad logic. Oops. And then we're going to give it, uh, I've created a new uh, bird PNG here, and I'll show you that here in a second. Bird.png. And then all we're going to do is render it to the screen. So down in here in our render method, we need to do sb.begin. If you remember to open our box up, now we'll do sb.draw. We'll give it our texture first, so bird. And then we'll say draw it at 50, 50, 50 in the x-axis, 50 in the y-axis, and then sb.in. Now I'd like to take you back to our menu state and inside update, the first thing we want to do is to handle input. So it's always going to be checking uh, our input to see if the user's done anything. Inside of our handle input uh, method, we're going to use if gdx.input.just touched. If the user has touched the screen with a mouse click or a finger click or anything like that, then it's going to do our game state manager dot set and a new play state and give it back our game state manager. Now, since we're using individual textures, this would be a good time to dispose of them, get rid of them since we're not using them anymore. Uh, that will free up memory and prevent memory leaks. Now let's go ahead and test this by hitting this run button up here. Um, it'll go ahead and build the game and we can see we got our menu screen. Now when I click on the screen, it transitions to a new play state and you can see our little flappy bird texture down in the lower left hand corner. So looking at this, our little flappy bird texture is a little bit small. Now what we can do is use our camera to set a viewport to only view a partial area of our game world. Uh, so uh, it will appear like the texture is zoomed in. So currently we're looking at the orthographic uh, camera docs for from LiveGDX. 
um, and we can see we have a set to ortho method on our camera and what it does is the first parameter is it takes is a y down true or false do we want y to start at zero from the top of our screen or from the bottom left hand uh, side of our screen by convention for at least me I like uh, Y to start in the lower left hand corner so uh, we will set that Y down to false the next is the viewport width and the viewport height that is how much of our game world we're going to see at any given time so we can adjust that from the actual screen size uh, to uh, make it appear that our game world is you know bigger than it actually is so how big do we actually want our viewport? How big do we want to see the world? Um, I'm guessing about half of this screen, if we just zoomed into just this portion of the screen, I think it would be uh, it would look pretty good. So let's do um, cam.set to ortho. We'll say false. And then we can use um, flappy bird demo dot width divided by two and flappy bird demo dot height um, divided by two and now we need to uh, adjust the uh, sprite batch so it knows the coordinate system that we're working with in relation to our camera where it needs to draw things on the screen in relation to our camera so uh, in order to do that we're going to do sprite batch dot set projection matrix to cam dot combine so I'm going to attempt to demonstrate this to you. This red line is our game world. These are objects inside of our game, okay? This green, uh, this like lime green line is our viewport. What our camera and what our user can actually see inside of our game world, okay? So basically can just see the bird right now. So said projection matrix tells us where in our game world we are. So it only draws the things that the camera should be able to see. So the bird in this case, um, it's not going to draw to the screen a pipe that is outside of the viewport's uh, uh, view, okay? So let's go ahead and hit run here. We should see a zoomed up portion of our game world because we're only showing so much of it. And now you can see our little flappy bird is a little bit more to scale. So I think we'll go ahead and cut it there for this video. I hope you guys learned a lot about cameras, viewports, and how to uh, set the projection matrix. Uh, in our next video, we'll go ahead and take the bird texture out of the play class, create a new class all of its own called the bird class. Uh, and in that class, we'll be able to move our bird uh, position wise on the screen. So if you like this video, go ahead, hit that like and subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And of course, if you're feeling generous, take a uh, look at my Patreon page. I would give you two big thumbs up for that. And I will catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.